about 11 o'clock, I start somewhere there. And during the night, all the lights were uh, okay. Uh, we saw the helicopters going around and around, many boats, but we couldn't see clear, very clear. You know, it was dark. And in the morning, early in the morning, we saw that half in the water, the other half slowly, slowly is going down. On her last trip, the Zenobia left the Slovenian port of Kopa, in those days still Yugoslavian territory. She sailed the full length of the Adriatic, along Albania, went south of the Greek Peloponnese, south of Crete, inbound to Tartus in Syria, only to meet her end in Larnaca. A new ship from Sweden will come to Cyprus, to visit Cyprus, or to, or to pass from Cyprus. And uh, when I saw that, we say that this, we, we rode on it, Zinovia. Very close, very close to us. Wasn't very far, wasn't very far. No, was, if somebody was walking on the boat, we can see that. Maybe a little further in, wasn't far away. I mean, it's great diving out in Cyprus. It's lovely, it's warm, it's beautiful, it's calm seas. You know, there's lots of entry points for shore dives and so forth. We've got numerous wrecks here. We've got the, the Alexandria, uh, which is an Egyptian fishing trawler that went down in 2006. We've got the Champagne, which we found a couple of years ago. It's a yacht that we named, because I could have popped a cork when I found it. But for sure, the Zenobia, well, the reason I've got a dive centre here is because she's the best wreck. Typically, we get 30 metres visibility over here. Uh, the best we've ever known it is probably 45, 50, 50 metres. I mean, today itself is probably 35, 40 metres. You know, it's fantastic. No fatalities on Zenobia, so everybody managed to get off OK. No waves, nothing at all at that time. In June, thinking in June. No waves, nothing at all. But the boat went down, right? It became many waves, many waves. We're currently uh, 1.5 kilometres away from the shore, which is where the Zenobia went down. We are right in the flight path coming into Larnaca Airport, which is directly over the Zenobia in the Alexandria. I told you, many hundred, hundred people were standing outside and they are watching. Why? And say, what happened, what happened, what happened? But we say, we say oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, but it's happened. It's happened, this one. Okay, we dropped down to 30 meters. When we drop down here, that's where the trailer is. Now. We actually pass into the trailer. Okay, then we're going to pass in, move close to the, to the uh, uh, it's actually the deck. The Zenobia, 172 meters of ferry, is now resting in 42 meters of water. Built in 1979 in Malmo, Sweden, by Nockham's Shipyards, it was owned by the Greece Syria Express Line and registered in Switzerland. Less than a year old, she sank on the second trip of her operational life in the early morning of June 7, 1980. The struggle to stay afloat and survive followed the uncontrolled filling of the computer controlled ballast tanks. 
it took long enough to allow passengers and crew to abandon the ship. Due to the port listing which the Zenobia developed, none of her starboard lifeboats could be launched. They're still there, left for the fish. One man's wreck is another man's treasure. The vessel, once a proud state-of-the-art ferry, is now a heaven for marine life. The capsized Zenobia landed on her side. The lorries that had been chained on the upper parking deck held onto the ship for years until their chains fatigued, broke open and let the trucks crash onto the sea floor. The manifest mentions 104 fully loaded articulated lorries, some utility vehicles and a Yugoslavian registered Lada sedan. The cargo still lies undisturbed next to the ship and within its holds. For unclear reasons, no salvage work has ever been carried out. Was it depth? Was it gossip? Was it insurance? The wreckage undoubtedly forms world's largest underwater truck junkyard. Some trucks are still awaiting the day that they can shed their chains too. They will crash onto the sea floor and join the final resting place of the other vehicles. So when you drop over, you can go from 22 metres down to 40, 42 metres. It's an amazing dive, really. It's like a wall dive. But when you go under the bow and the front bow thruster, if you look up, because there's no sunlight under there, there's no growth. So it looks like it sank yesterday. Plus of which, the anchor chain is going into the sand, the curvature, which is, I mean, that's how you really get the feel of it from the front. You know, the curvature of the, of the bow going into the sand. There's just something pretty fantastic about that, you know. The Mediterranean is not particularly known for its abundant fish life. Most marine life is either concentrated in marine reserves or on wrecks. Wrecks are sanctuaries for fish and the Zenobia is no exception. She has converted herself into an oasis in the desert, a man-made reef. Fish definitely own the Zenobia. She's a haven for them, and the sheer presence of these schools creates a permanent year-round attraction. The attraction of the wreck to the fish is that it provides shelter and protection which allows them to hide against predators. The wreck and its structure also keep the fishermen away. They're not going to risk their nets, which get damaged easily when they fish on the wreck. The prolific marine life includes a fair amount of oversized groupers. They live in peace as fishing on the wreck is not only prohibited, but also actively enforced. If you get caught fishing on the Zenobia, it's a 5,000 euro fine plus six months in prison. After 30 years underwater, every inch of the Zenobia is completely covered in weed and algae. 
marine life encounters are unavoidable. It's not only the groupers, but also the breams and the rainbow wrasses. Over the years, the hull of the Zenobia has turned into a meadow. Other than weeds, you find this Neptune grass and small groupers like this painted coma. Small as they are, the sea cucumbers play their own role in the Zenobia ecosystem. Feeding on plankton and decaying organic matter, they sift through bottom sediments whilst using their tentacles, making them one of the cleaners of the sea. There are only a few fish to watch out for, as they have poisonous spines. You won't find flowers on the Zenobia. This unfolding spirograph is a tube worm and belongs to the animal kingdom. You find many varieties of tube worms all with different colour schemes. They spend their days weaving their feathers in the weak current to gather floating plankton on which they feed. Entrances to the interior of the ship from the outer decks are now horizontal, so they look like oversized mailbox slots rather than doorways. The entrance of the doorways for the cafeteria is at 26 metres. On your way there, you pass the truck driver's accommodation. Visiting the cafeteria is all about getting the feel for the vast interior space. As the wreck is capsized and rests on its side, dive orientation is hampered. But if we turn the ship back on its keel, we get the original picture. Nobody knows what happened. Nobody knows. Many people say later on, many people say that they moved cars for Syria. Nobody knows. We didn't see anybody. Until we found the Zenobia notes from June 4th, 1980. The captain and 12 persons of the crew embarked on the tug Onisilus while their ship was transferred to Larnaca. Zenobia, in 45 degrees left, was transferred on 6 p.m. 2nd of June afternoon, a mile outside of Larnaca's port, where it was anchored. As soon as the ship anchored, they visited the hold where the trailers were stuck. And that was the cause of Zenobia's accident. The trailers, about 220, as well as eight fridges, were almost destroyed. In the meantime, the drivers who transferred the day before yesterday they were still in four hotels. Signed, Demetra. It's rumoured 
that Mossad were involved. She was carrying arms for the Palestinians and six members of Mossad got onto the, uh, got onto the vessel, flooded one side, emptied out the other side. This is unconfirmed. Uh, the rumor is that the tanks were flooded. The six guys dove on the Zenobia and were arrested. Apparently, the Israeli government got on to the phone. That night, the plane landed, 45 minutes it took off, so you do the math. Me, personally, I've never seen any munitions or anything like that on the Zenobia. With the wreck on its side and all the structures at a 90 degree angle, dive navigation is confusing and easily leads to disorientation. Nothing compares to full wreck penetration, which happens to involve the greatest level of risks. It's the risk of getting lost in this junkyard, the risk of complete darkness in the event of a multiple light failure and the inability to abort the dive immediately in the event of an emergency, like an air supply hiccup. Passing through the vast parking garage, reading the truck information, continuing to the bow, another hundred meters away from the entry, makes you feel like a midget. Flapping fin movements, or the simple touch of a truck, can reduce visibility rapidly to zero. Trucks have their own way of showing their history and their future. A future only known to us now that they've arrived at their unplanned destination in the eerie dark of the holds. You can't always swim along the underside of the vehicles. They're still held in place by chains that are gradually losing their strength as they're not designed to hold more than 40 tons of dead truck. And even the truck's payload is not stable anymore. You don't need much imagination to figure out how divers became disoriented in the past and lost their way never to find the exit again. It is obvious, the Zenobia, or the Zen for those who fell in love with her, has to be treated with respect. Freaking out this far inside the Zen will put you in a world of trouble. At last, the quest to locate the larder was successful. Small as it is, stowed away in a far dark corner. The larder carries the ultimate timestamp.
Unfortunately, depth and distance inside the wreck restrict the exploration times considerably. You won't be able to explore the car decks for more than 20 minutes at a time. Less than 1% of the divers that visit the Zenobia, some 10,000 a year, manage to make it all the way down to the engine room itself. It is a heavy, challenging dive, only for those who are very accomplished. It is a very surreal dive too, this far inside the Zen, at the very bottom. The confined space, the 42 meter depth, the engine room itself, and the simple fact that few divers venture this far inside adds to the magic of the visit. You see parts of the two seven-cylinder, two-stroke engines of the Zenobia. Each of them delivered close to 19,000 brake horsepower. The propellers um, on the Zenobia, they're a special mercury alloy. Um, the top one's at 26 metres, the bottom one's at 36. Specially made for the Zenobia and the sister ship, actually. Two ships were ordered. One was paid for, one wasn't. The sister ship was paid for, that still floated. This one wasn't paid for. Subsequently, she went down on a, a ledge made in voyage. It was actually a second voyage, apparently. Was it an insurance job? Who knows? All I can say is thank the Lord for it being here because it's putting food on my plate and it's paying my bills. There's a moray living on the top, uh, a resident moray living just by the, on the prop shaft on the top prop. That's at 26 metres, so it's nice to see. Now obviously there's two on the bottom of the ship and there's uh, spare blades and so forth in the lower cargo deck each worth $250,000, each propeller. So the propellers are unsalvaged, still there, because nothing's allowed to be taken from the Zenobia. Fortunately, it's like, like a man who is ready to die. And you saw him to close his eyes. He opened it, he closed it, he opened it, and then say, 
バイバイ。